to our dance and religion module. One of the links that was provided on your resource sheet was this link to a liturgical dance. And to the best of my ability, the resource sheet is going to offer additional experiences, additional perspectives, additional um, videos, because we only have a semester and the dance, the world of dance is such a large world to cover in, um, in only a semester. I also would like to say, uh, if you think of something that you would like included, please shoot me an email via the Canvas platform so that I can include it on the resource sheet. And also, all of you have your own experiences and they might, and those experiences can provide more knowledge for the class. So if I say something or if something comes up and you've had a different experience and you want to add that into the discussion, meaning letting me know so that I can include your experience too, I won't have to name you if you don't want to, please let me know. Um, I am once again offering information from the the experience that I've had, but my experience is not the only experience in the world. And please add in as respectfully as you can. In your last tat, your official tat, you looked at the Quaker community and one of the Shaker villages. I mentioned that within the Quaker belief system, there is an acceptance of the supreme being, a supreme being that has both female and male qualities. But I also would like to offer this question, this perspective. Um, how do you think spiritual dance looks when gen there's gender fluidity within a community uh, or multiple energies are accepted or that there are just different um, gender norms? Once again, I know that we have our experience, but once you begin to travel out of your community um, via actual traveling, physically traveling, or discussions with people of different communities, you'll see that there are places where things are a little different um, than what you're what you're used to. For example, in some parts of the in some communities that I go to, I look for a seamstress to get things made. And in some other communities that I travel to, I look for a tailor. So um, that role, that position, that professional position will might be held by a different gender in different communities. In alignment with that, I offer this link to a Facebook video, a video found on Facebook, excuse me, um, of a collective of dancers dancing for the energy of Oya, I would ask that if you are interested to go ahead and click on the link, the link is provided in your lecture guide and kind of just jot down three things that come to mind and then come back to this and for my explanation. So go ahead and do that if you, if you would like to, if not, um, that's fine too. Here's what I offer. In the video, the dancers are paying homage to an energy called Oya. Oya is of the Yoruba uh, religion and is the energy of the tornado. So tornadoes, turbulence, thinking about uh, what, what kind of words, what kind of descriptors come to mind. One of the things that I found spectacular in this in this video was the disruption of of what I was taught as a child um in my experience growing up I was told um that dances by women were softer or dances for women were softer and was this and was that and was this and was that but here is a dance form that is different than what I was taught. Because if I look at, when looking at this video and this uh, choreography for Oya, I would not describe it as soft. I would describe it as sharp at times, as extremely precise, as quick, um, 
but I would not describe it as soft. And that's and that doesn't take any value from it because I still think that it is a very wonderful piece of movement expression. But it is different than it has a different set of values than the values that I was taught growing up. And this likens me back to a comment that I made earlier in it is important to understand the values and the beliefs of a community in order to really look at their dance forms because their ideals of beauty, of success, of dot, 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 dot might be different. Staying in the Yoruba Pantheon, um, just to give you an introduction as you prepare for your next takeaway ticket, your tat, Yoruba is a religious practice. It is a monotheistic practice originating in Nigeria. Monotheistic meaning it is a it is a practice that has believes in one supreme being. And while it does have while it is monotheistic, it does embrace different sects meaning different sections of the religion and these different sections of the religion having varied approaches to the divinity. Um, once again, this is, I am offering this information from my scholarship, my research, and that also includes having uh, family members and friends that practice this. So I, um, but if you have ex additional experience that you would like me to offer, please let me know via Canvas email so that I can add it in and offer it to the community, our community our class. Within a Europa practice, they recognize the uh, religious practice, within the Yoruba religious practice, um, because all people that are Yoruba are not practicing this specific form of religion. Um, but within the Yoruba religious practice, they do believe in the tangible, the two realms, the tangible meaning the one that you, where you could touch stuff, <laughs> and the invisible realm and their connection between the two and the interaction between the two. So what happens in the invisible realm directly affects what happens in the um, this plane of reality, this tangible plane of reality. We are going to look at Oshun specifically for your next Hat. So I've given you information about, wait, did I give you all the information? Okay. I've given you information about um, Yoruba. Let's go a little further. And um, going back to this idea of monotheistic, but with varied approaches, if I were to compare it to uh, to Christianity, or if I was to use that as my analogy, um, because we see here in our in our first what, who are we looking at? Dances of Oshun. Um, Oshun is a deity. Just to explain this idea that a deity is not a god, um, if we were to look at it and compare it to Christianity, within Christianity, there's one supreme being. But there are also Christians who acknowledge the space of angels and saints. So while these energies are acknowledged, they do not hold the same space of being the uh, supreme being, right? Okay, so bringing it back. What are you looking at in this next tag? You're going to be looking at movement of the deity Oshun and who does these movements, people that practice Yoruba, Santeria, Candomblé, and dance practitioners, because it has moved into the performance world, thinking of dancers, professional dancers, as cultural ambassadors who share cultural knowledge with uh, people that do not belong of that, that kind of like a show and tell. You're showing people and telling them about a, about a different culture other than theirs, yeah? Um this movement practice and religion is believed to have begun in Yoruba land, which is in Nigeria, but is now practiced all over the world and is a directly related to, so here we go with the history, political and social events. So the political and social events that help this religious practice and its movement forms to 
develop and become a, uh, a global thing were the transatlantic slave trade and technology. Technology being everything from books, movies, um, and the internet. I say that to, uh, because I literally watched a video this weekend of a group in a Jap a, a group of people that were Japanese performing these movements. So globalization is a thing, and uh, it is affected by it has an effect on the da- the world of dance and religions. These dances were originally done as part of the religious ceremonies. Dances, these movements were done as a way to connect to the ocean spirit, but they now can be done socially at events when uh, music, ocean music is played. And once again, it's also done in performance spaces. There's a company called Kulu Mele that is in Philly. They've been around for about 60 years and Within the last few years, they did a movement research experience in Cuba. And upon their return, the way that they showed the community uh, what they learned and thanked the community for the for its support was to perform some of these Oshun movements in their concert. Once again, the why, it's done for ceremony, but it's also to connect to the Oshun spirit but it can also be done now in the performance space to share information. Remember, culture is dynamic. It's ever-growing. Oshun, deity, not a god. I explained this a little earlier. Uh, Oshun is practiced while in Yoruba, but also in Munkami, Kamdomble, Vudun, and Santeria. Depending on the dialect of the person, the language, the phonetics of the person um, writing, you might see Oshun spelled different ways. Oshun is the energy of the moving fresh waters and can be represented by a woman of any complexion. Attributes, things that are that are connected to Oshun, bells, peacock feathers, honey, brass, copper, bangles, vultures, yellow, gold, pink, pumpkins, fans, and mirrors. Oshun is considered to be the patron of pregnant women and fertility. Oshun is considered to be a beneficent, loving energy, a generous energy. Some, uh, someone that carries Oshun energy would, uh, is a generous person, but tempestuous, right? This idea of fertility and, um, and flirting. Oshun is a good cook and it has the ability to divine via Kari shell or examples of divining would be reading of Kari shells or tarot cards. Some people read tea leaves and things like that. Oshun's movement. So when you're looking at Oshun's movement, how would you describe the technique of the movement? Language is important. Technique in this case, when I refer to technique, I want you to use the general definition of technique, the efficient way of doing something. All dance forms have technique, but all dance form techniques are going to vary from community to community. Oshun's technique includes flirtatious movements, like ruffling of the shoulders and movement, small articulations of the shoulders. When Oshun walks, it's usually at a moderate tempo. It's not rushed. There's a reverse of gestures. So sometimes when we're looking at performances, when um, someone gets angry, let's go back to that walking. If someone gets angry, they might start walking faster and stomping and things like that. Well, it's reversed in Oshun's movements. When Oshun's mo- when Oshun is believed to be happier, the let uh. The walking would increase in speed, but the turn, uh, Oshun's movement has a lot of turning in it. The turning would be faster. Um, Also, Oshun might be crying when she's happy or the dancer is showing that Oshun is happy. They They might be crying rather than laughing. I've heard someone say, if you see Oshun laughing, then you better watch out. 
captivating, sensuous, intoxicating. So think of this person is drawing you in with their intent, their, their movement. Um, you're fixated on watching them do things, which is also why there's this idea of taking your time, the, the performer taking their time. It's postured in a way to bring attention to the productive organs. So the, the torso is upright. Shoulders are rolled back to show shoulders and breast and and a clear view of hips and things like that. Not that the person would have all of their the person still was clothed, but just to to uh, bring attention to those areas. I mentioned the fluttering of the shoulders and there's small articulations in the wrist, like small turns of the wrist and movement of the wrist, because Oshun is often known to uh, use a fan and fan herself um, or have a mirror to, to look at herself. Some people think that she's just looking at herself, but I've also heard stories that say she's also looking behind herself to make sure people aren't coming to get her or to be prepared for when someone comes to get her. So here is your analysis number six. This is a, an assignment that is a little larger. It is three paragraphs. So you're going to watch the video attached to the, <laughs> attached to the tat. You're going to watch the video attached. And in your first paragraph, you are going to answer those questions that are listed. Define dance. What are the elements of dance? What are three possible functions? What are the categories of religious dance? Describe each category. You have all of this information already. This is stuff that you've done. This is a larger assignment because you're, you have a larger amount of information to choose from um, because we're getting further into the semester. Uh, your second paragraph is contextual knowledge. So this is the five W. So now you're giving me, in your first paragraph, you gave me information about dance. Now you're giving me history of the thing that, the dance form that you're watched. You're giving me contextual knowledge. So that means not just me, you're giving it to the reader. Go back to um, an example that I gave you earlier in the semester. Imagine that you are a dance historian. What you are writing is going to be looked at by someone in the future. The only record they have of this experience, that video, the only thing that they have or that you watch, the only thing that they have to know, to reference is this piece of paper that you're writing, the submission that you're going to turn in. So you, in this submission, want to be able to tell the person, what was dance? What did dance mean? Like, what is dance? Yeah. And then you want to tell them about the form that you, the history of the form that you watched. And then you're documenting, you're archiving the form by writing those sentences. So paragraph one is specifically talking to dance in general. Paragraph number two is talking to the five W's of Oshun. So you're talking about Oshun's uh, movement, Yoruba society, and things like that. The community in which this dance evolved. What happened? What's going on? And then in the third paragraph, that's where you're archiving the dance. So this is a base paragraph. This base paragraph includes a minimum of five base sentences. Notice I said minimum. That means that you created five base list and then use those base lists to create sentences and then use those creates use those sentences to create a paragraph the paragraph we're practicing writing right that's the overall goal to practice writing so how do you write a good paragraph it's not just putting sentences together it also includes connecting those sentences right so that there's a certain flow to it so even if you're not practicing being a dance historian think about practicing your writing skills i would prefer that you practice being a dance historian for the for this assignment but most certainly practice writing a well written paragraph that flows also you are demonstrating your engagement with the course materials that I offered, which are via the lecture, the lecture and the reading by including that information in your three paragraphs. 
that information needs to be the foundation of your response. If you do any additional research, then you are going to provide the link or the site. You're going to write a, um, a citation to provide the source from which you got that information because that's it. You're going to provide that source. If there are any questions about this assignment, please let me know prior to the assignment being done so that I have time to read your, uh, your correspondence, respond to it. You have a chance to get my response, respond to it, do whatever is necessary and get the assignment in. Have a very blessed day.